Hey guys, welcome to Photox on location part two. Uh, today I'm going to try and do some long exposure shots for you. Uh, I've just bought a high tech pro stop uh, 10 stopper. So I've come down to this uh, small bit of river, streams, uh, other bits of water to try and get some nice uh, silky water for you. So I'm going to take a few shots down here and then uh, I'll show you the results in a minute. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the camera set up looking towards this uh, small bit of water down here. Now what I'm going to do, before I even touch the filter, I need to set the camera up ready to go. So what I'm going to do, I've attached my filter holder already, and I'm going to set up the focus, and I'm going to set up the exposure as if I was taking a normal photo without a filter. So I'm just going to um, focus on the big rock down there, just in front of the water. And once I've got that focus, I'm actually going to switch my camera into manual focus mode so that the camera won't change the focus. Now with the lens I've got on here, which is the uh, Cosina 19-35, to I've got to be really careful because the front element actually uh, spins as you focus. So what I need to do now is I need to look on the uh, focus uh, markings on the lens where it is and make sure that I keep it there when I adjust this filter and put the filter in. The next thing I'm going to do is go into manual mode on my camera, so the M mode, and I'm going to set uh, my aperture, which I'm going to put as f8 for this, and then I'm going to adjust my shutter speed and see what the camera's meter thinks is the correct shutter speed for this scene. And that's given me a shutter speed of 10. Right, now we can get on to the filter. This is the one I bought it, well I ordered it online and it arrived yesterday. So this is my first time using it out in the field. You can see it there, it's really dark. Uh, it's going to block 10 stops of light and it's going to give us a really long exposure to make this water really silky. So what I need to do is very carefully put the filter into the filter holder without adjusting the lens focus. It's not all lenses um, rotate on focus. If you've got a one that doesn't, and then it's really easy. You can just slide the filter straight in and not worry about it, but I've got to be very careful. So put the lens in, make sure the focus is back where it was, it is there. Okay, the next thing we need to do now is adjust the shutter speed um, for the 10 stop filter. Now very handily when you buy the filter you also get this little card which gives you a rough guide on uh, how many stops to change your shutter speed. Now uh, I was getting one tenth of a second uh, before and if I look on here the closest it's got is 8 or 15. So I'll go with 8th, which is a 2 minute exposure. Now on this camera you can only go to 30 seconds before you hit bulb mode. Now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to try an exposure at 30 seconds and just to see how it comes out because there are some highlights here and I want to make sure that the camera is not metering for those. And so I'm going to try a 30 second exposure. I'm going to put the camera on the self timer so I don't knock it. And press the shutter button got a 10 second self timer on so it's going to take 10 seconds then you'll hear the camera open up okay the camera's opened up now and it'll hold the shutter open for uh, 30 seconds now if this comes out too dark as I suspect it will um, I'll have to go into bulb mode uh, which means the shutter stays open for as long as you uh, physically hold the, butter, uh, the button. Um, I'm not going to stand there with my finger on the button. I'm going to get my uh, remote control out. And it's got a locking shutter button on the remote. Okay, so that picture's done. Let's have a look on the screen. It's actually not too bad. It's not as dark as I was expecting it to be. Um, yeah, I could probably work with that as it is, actually. It's, it's really not too bad. I'm just going to zoom in, just check that it's sharp all the way through, which it appears to be, all the bits that I want to be.
be sharp, sharp. What would have been really good here as well would have been a circular polarizer to uh, knock the glare off this water, but unfortunately I don't have one to fit this system. So I'll just have to make do with the, with the reflections. Okay, so I'm gonna find another spot. I might move a little bit closer to that rock and I'll take some more shots uh, down there. An important thing to remember when you're using uh, long exposure filters is once it's on the camera, the camera's pretty much blind. You won't be able to see anything through the viewfinder and quite often live view doesn't work either. So every time you want to change composition, you need to remove the filter and start the process all over again. Uh, set up your framing, set your focus and lock it. Um, take a metering reading without the filter, remember what it is and then uh, attach the filter. So I've set up a new shot here. I'll just check what uh, the meter is reading. Obviously, if you're still in manual mode, come out of manual mode into either uh, aperture priority or shutter priority. Um, aperture priority would be best because we want to know what the shutter speed is. Uh, you can set the aperture that you want and then read the shutter speed, which I'm getting as, it's flickering between uh, eight and 10. So I'll just call it 10 again and we'll stick with the 30 second shutter speed. So back into manual mode, again making sure I don't knock the focus, slide the filter back in, I'm still in uh, self timer. Uh, on this camera I can actually shut the viewfinder um, which stops any stray light entering and ruining the shot. It's not very often that happens but if you're in uh, sunlight and you've got direct light coming towards the viewfinder it is a good idea to try and cover it either with the uh, built-in lever or a little cover if you've got it, even a cloth will do. So that's all set up. I shall press the button, set the self timer going. We'll wait 10 seconds until we hear it open. Uh, it's open and now we'll wait for 30 seconds for the exposure. When you're buying a long exposure filter, um, I really recommend getting a square slotting system like I'm using here. I'm using the Lee filter holder and as I said the uh, High Tech Pro Stop. And the reason why I recommend the slotting system is because as I just said, every time you want to refocus or reframe your shot you need to remove the filter. And if you've got a circular screwing filter that does become quite tedious having to uh, screw it in and unscrew it every time. If you set up a shot like this and then suddenly knock the camera, you've got to unscrew it again and start all over again. With the slotting system, you can set it all up, just slide the filter in and go. If you do happen to knock the camera, just quickly slide the filter back out again, make sure everything's all right, and then off you go again. Okay, so that exposure's finished. This one is actually a little bit darker than I would like in places. Um, so what I could do is go onto the bold mode and keep the shutter open for maybe 40 or 50 seconds. I think on this occasion, I can probably raise the light levels enough in Lightroom to not have to bother doing that. Um, but uh, for the next shot, I think I'm probably going to go into bold mode. Okay, so I've now got my uh, remote control plugged in. Uh, with this one, you can put batteries in it and you can actually set all sorts of different things up. Um, but for the shutter button, you actually don't need batteries. So I'm just going to use it without batteries. Okay, so I've set up a new shot. I focused on the rock down there that I want. I've locked my focus into manual focus. I'm now going to get a meter reading in aperture priority mode, which is reading uh, three, between 2.5 and three, third of a second. So we'll go back into manual mode. Now on my camera screen, I go up to 30 seconds and then it goes into bold mode. And uh, in order to do that, just simply move the scroll wheel and you see it says bulb. Now what that means is the shutter will stay open for as long as I keep pressing the button on my remote or on this one you can actually press and then slide it to lock it open. What I need uh, for this is a timer and so I'm going to use my trusty iPhone as a uh, countdown timer or a count up timer. So we'll just get a timer up and I'm going to keep the shutter open for about 40 to 50 seconds. 
So everything's ready to go. For this purpose, I can now take it out of a self timer and just put it into normal. Put the filter in, which help. So again, very carefully slide the filter in, making sure I don't knock anything. Close down the viewfinder. And then as soon as I press the shutter button, I'm gonna start the timer on the phone and then we'll keep it open for about 40 seconds. Being very careful uh, not to knock the tripod at all, the camera, uh, because then that will introduce blur into the shot that we don't want. So just keep an eye on your timer. This is a brilliant way to do really long exposures. You can go for as long as you want with this, uh, 20, 30 minutes, as long as your battery will last really. Um, be careful doing really long exposures because you can damage your sensor. Uh, most cameras are shut down before you do any damage, so it should be all right. Okay, watching the timer run, coming up for 40 seconds. I think I'll go for 45. And we'll close it there. So we'll have a look at the shot that we've done. That's actually still a little bit dark for me. I'd like a bit more light in there, so we'll do a couple more. Okay, the shot I'm currently on has been going for one minute, 30 seconds. I'm going to keep it open for about two minutes, and we'll see uh, what we get. It's one minute, 50, two minutes. So we'll have a look. That's much, much better. That's uh, so that's almost perfect actually. The water's silky smooth. The background's all nicely lit. The foreground's a little bit dark, um, but we can uh, sort that out in Lightroom afterwards. So I'm happy with that one, so I'm gonna move on and find somewhere else. Okay, so I found another nice little spot here. Uh, the only issue is the water is really deep just beside me, so I've got to be very careful not to fall in. I've set the camera up, I've got the composition I want. Um, I've gone into manual focus again. So all I've got to do is take my meter reading and then attach the filter and uh, we're ready to go. So I've got the filter here. I've got to try and uh, get this onto the camera somehow without falling in. Again, being careful not to uh, knock anything, or in this case, drop anything. Okay, it's on, it's back where it was on the focus. Okay, it's so in aperture priority mode. We're getting a uh, meter reading of uh, four. So I'm gonna need to use bulb mode again. So go back into manual mode, into bulb, and then get our uh, remote control ready. We'll close the viewfinder down. Get my expensive timer out again. Okay, I'm gonna go for, I'll start with about one minute, 30 second exposure, because it's a bit brighter here than it was at the other place. And we'll see how that goes. One thing you definitely wanna bear in mind when you're doing landscapes like this, um, appropriate clothing. I've got waterproof boots on. Uh, to get to this location, I had to traipse through quite deep water. It went right out to the top of the boots. So something like wellies is a brilliant idea. But you need a really good sturdy tripod. And um, as you can see on the footage there, the water is actually coming through quite fast. Um, that's going to be causing uh, motion blur on the tripod. Um, so get the best tripod you can afford. Um, it will serve you for life if you get a good one. Uh, you may have to spend a couple of hundred pounds, maybe a bit more, um, but it's really worth it. As I mentioned, the remote control uh, is a very good idea. And it's also a good idea um, to bring some carrier bags or some plastic bags. So if the rain does start, uh, you can cover your camera up, but you can still carry on shooting. Okay, so we've been going for 1 minute 22 seconds. I'm going to go for about 1.30, and then I'll close the shutter. That's 1.30 there, so we'll close the shutter and have a look at our shot. 
if I can without falling in again. Okay, so that's actually overexposed by a little bit. I uh, probably need to bring it down to about uh, one minute exposure. Uh, so we'll go for another shot at a minute. And find my timer again. So we'll reset that and go again. With long exposure photography, there is maths to it. But if you're like me, you're not brilliant at maths. Sometimes you have to have a little bit of guesswork. Um, when, uh, it's good to, when you first get a 10 stop filter, it's good to play around with it because they're not all exactly 10 stops. Um, what I could do with this camera is I could actually set um, the metering so that when I turn the dial, it actually goes uh, one stop instead of the default one third stops. So if I put it on, say, a shutter speed of uh, one tenth of a second, I could then just click the dial 10 times and that would supposedly give me the correct exposure. What you might find is actually you're still slightly under or overexposing because the filter is not exactly uh, 10 stops. So when you first get a filter like this, before you do any sort of critical work with it, just experiment with it somewhere like this where it doesn't really matter. Um, so you can sort of see what uh, sort of time you need to add on for your filters. I've been adding on about 10 stops most of the time and depending on the light it's been slightly under or overexposed so I've still got to kind of dial in exactly how many stops uh, I need to adjust. Okay so I'm going to stop it there that was just over one minute about one minute 15 so I'll have a look at that. Still a little bit overexposed but it's not as bad as it was I can probably get most of that back in Lightroom. Let's just have a closer look. Yeah, that'll do. I'm going to move location slightly, a bit closer to those rocks over there, I think. So again, we've got to start again, uh, take the filter off, set the focus, set the exposure, and then start again. Hey guys, Tom from Photoix. Uh, I'm still out on location. My uh, camcorder batteries run out and I dropped my uh, zoom microphone into the water, so that's broken. Um, currently, I'll just show you where I am. Currently down on the River Severn and shooting some photos, still doing some long exposures. Um, it's very muddy down here. Um, but uh, just quickly show you what I'm doing, what setup I've got. Uh, if you can see my camera, um, I've got a Lee uh, 0.9 uh, hard grad and the high tech 10 stop, and uh, I'm just trying to shoot some pictures of this um, old uh, jetty looking over to the Severn Bridge. Tide's on its way in, so I'm uh, pushing time. I'm going to try and get out of it quickly before I get stuck. Um, put some pictures up at the end of this and uh, I'll talk you through uh, the settings, how I did them and uh, hopefully you'll find that useful. My feet are actually sinking into the mud now so it's time to go. See you guys!